Hi everybody, it is Nat from Studio Hacks here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your voice sound much better in GarageBand. And this works just as well for singing, for vocals, as it does for spoken word if you're doing a podcast or an audiobook or something like that. And before I show you the techniques within GarageBand, I might point out that having a good quality studio microphone and a good room to record in are really important things when you're looking for a good vocal sound. Also, you might want to invest uh, in a pop filter or a vocal shield. I'll pop a few links in the description for some of my recommendations. You don't have to spend too much money, but there are some minimum requirements for getting a reasonable vocal sound. So let's have a look at what we're going to be dealing with in this particular tutorial, which is me singing a line in a song, and it's a pretty rough vocal, and this is the completely raw vocal just the way I sang it in with no effects or anything on the track. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, so this is a bit of a lo-fi chill song and you can hear that those vocals aren't perfect. So we're going to have a look at how we might be able to fix the pitch a little bit of those vocals, as well as make them sound much better in the mix. And the quickest way to do that, the, the really quick and easy method for making your vocals sound drastically better is to just highlight the track by clicking on it. And then you want to open your library, which is right here. You can use the Y key as a shortcut to open and close the library. Now I like to have the library nice and big so I can see all the selections. Because this is an audio track, you would have recorded your vocals onto an audio track. We have some presets here for different audio tracks. We have vocal presets, we have guitar and bass presets. So we can simply highlight the track and click through some of these presets. And these will apply some loadouts, some preset track channel strips as we call them in the studio. And we can see what's being applied by opening the smart controls using this one here. And the B key is the shortcut for opening and closing the smart controls. And when we click on this track section here, and we make sure that this little plugins arrow is pointing down by clicking on it, we can see here that this bright vocal has applied an equalizer, a compressor, an exciter, which will add more harmonics and make the sound thicker. It's done a de and some e another equalizer there. And we can change the macro controls using these knobs here. But let's have a listen to some of these different vocal presets and how they affect the voice. I'm going to make sure we start right on the voice here. Summer dreaming Talk about that feeling Let's have a listen to the compressed vocal. So you can hear that the equalizer is a lot more dull on that one. Let's hear what the dance vocal will sound like. Let me see whether that's applied any auto tune. I can click on the editor right here, which is the scissors or use the E shortcut to open and close the editor. And if I select the track area, we can see whether there's any pitch correction and there's no pitch correction so far. So we will touch on that in a moment. Let's have a quick listen to some of these other ones. Let's have a listen to the fuzz vocal. Summer dreaming. We've got some experimental ones here. We've got, we can do some joke sounds. This is going to make it sound, uh, I'm assuming, high pitched. <laughs> megaphone vocal. I'll make it sound like I'm singing through a megaphone. So you can have a lot of fun uh, simply by clicking some of these track presets here. And I'm going to just go with the bright vocal for the moment. That seems to be a nice fit to this, the sound that I got through my microphone. It's nice and clear. It's nice and bright. Now, one thing we can do is once we have selected a preset that's not set in stone, we can go down to the smart controls 
and we can mess around with some of these macro controls and we can increase the compression on the voice that will even out the overall volume. We can take some of the low end out or boost the low end if we want more low end. We can make it even brighter by pushing this high a little bit up. Let's have a listen. So Let's make it really insanely trebly. So so that's way too much for my liking. So I'm just going to bring that back here. And these macro controls are actually controlling these track plugins here. So if I click on this channel EQ plugin and I mess with this low end, you'll see that it's changing the low uh, shelf there. Um, for those of you who know a little bit more about some of these finer settings, and I'm assuming the high shelf here, there we go. So these are macro controls changing these plugins. Now, one other thing to really instantaneously make your vocals just sit in a mix a lot better, and this depends on the genre that you're going for um, as to how much effects you want to use, but adding some echo and reverb is a fantastic way of really blending your vocal into the mix because without echo or reverb, without any effects, uh, we call this a dry vocal. So down in the smart controls when they're open, uh, we've got under this plugin section, we've got the master echo and the master reverb. So if I dial these up a little bit, let's have a listen to what they do to the voice. So that's um, really changed the feel of it. And that's probably a little bit too much, but let's listen to it dry. And now let's listen to it with some effects, master effects. And we can also edit these master effects by clicking this edit button here. And this is what I've done for this um, particular one. We've got a master echo here and you can muck around with some of the presets here of this master echo, as in we can make the repeats even more or less. So if I make the repeats less, that will change the feedback of the delay. So you can hear there's only one echo, but if I push this all the way up, you'll hear probably lots of echoes. Only hearing one still. There we go. You can hear it trailing off there. So I had to push it all the way up to really get that effect. So we can change the color of that master echo and we can change all kinds of things, but we can also change this here to the master reverb. And we have underneath, we have all kinds of different options. We can choose different types of reverb church, club, um, small hall. So that can really change the overall effect. Now, when you change these master effects, if you have echo and reverb on any other track, it's going to change it for the whole song. So be careful with that. So I'm going to go back to the track by clicking here. And now we're going to look at how we can alter the pitch because we've got a pretty good tone now. Nice and bright, nice and warm. It's really cutting through that mix. So let's now go to the editor by clicking the scissors right here. And let's see what the uh, pitch correction within GarageBand does. If I just dial this all the way up, let's just see what it does. So that's given me that real auto tune sound there all the way up to a hundred. I can probably keep it sounding relatively natural and just have a little bit of pitch correction. If I have it about a third of the way up or half the way up, that doesn't sound too uh, overly pitch corrected. One other option I have, um, when you do this pitch correction, it's going to snap it to the closest semitone. So the half note, the closest half note. But sometimes it corrects to a note that's outside of the key of the song and it sounds a bit weird. So if I click this limit to key, 
it's going to only allow my voice to play notes within the key of the song. Um, for this to work properly, you have to have set the key of your song up here at, at the very start when you started creating your song. Um, and I do have another uh, tutorial all about the pitch correction in GarageBand that shows you how to even fix that if you haven't set that. So I'll pop that uh, in the description as well to that video and you can watch that tutorial if you're interested in that. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like when I limit it to the key. This should sound a lot better. Very nice. So my song is in the key of D major and it's only playing notes in the key of D major. One little bonus thing that I will show you is that there is a free uh, pitch correction plugin that's a little bit more powerful than the plugin, um, the standard plugin that you get with GarageBand, the inbuilt feature rather. So if I click on this track and open the smart controls um, and then make sure that this little plugins menu is open, I can then add my own plugins to this channel strip right here by hovering down the bottom, right at the very bottom there, you'll see if I hang my mouse there, a little line appears. And if I click, it'll allow me to add my own plugin to this audio track. And I have a special plugin that's called Gralion 2. And this is a free uh, version of this plugin. Um, there's a free and a paid, but the free version works quite well. And this is an auto-tune plugin. And um, the simplest way to use it is to just enable this pitch correction here. So this is like the slider from zero to 100%. And then I can also under the presets and the factory presets, I can select the key that I want it to be in. So this is a handy way of getting around that problem. If you don't know how to change the key in GarageBand or if you have it set to a different key, um, you can figure that out and then change this to what you want. So I'm going to select D major here. And then this smooth is how fast and robotic the uh, pitch correction sounds. So fast will sound really robotic and slow will sound more natural. Let's listen to the full pitch correction with the fast snapping. And this should sound very robotic. So if I want to make that a little bit more natural sounding, I can dial that back and I can smoothen this right here. And the snap range, bring that down a little bit and let's have a listen now. So that's a little bit more natural sounding and um, we've got a, bit, a little bit of a better result. There is also a, a really cool little uh, dial here called inertia. And um, I'm not exactly sure what this does, but it tends to, when you dial it all the way up, play less notes. Let's have a listen. So so that makes some crazy wacky sounds so i do have another video on gralian as well so i'll leave all these links in the description that's a lot of links um, so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial it's given you a few tips on how you can really you know drastically alter the sound of vocal recordings using GarageBand for mac and if you found this content valuable, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want to learn everything there is to know about GarageBand, I do have a paid Udemy course. It's quite cheap and it's very extensive. It's about four hours of video training and I'll show you how to make completely professional mixes and masters. And this is a complete beginner's guide all the way through to advanced use of GarageBand for Mac. And the course is very recent. I made it only about five months ago. And uh, it has some really good techniques for improving your music production skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.